learning hybrid photography one day at a time. Become a smarter photographer every day at discovermirrorless.com. It's free and phone and tablet friendly. Hi there, I'm Carol. I'm one of the hybrid heroes. And you're seeing my still image right now because our last hybrid hangout with the Shiro's, all seven of us female hybrid heroes, was recorded really poorly by Google+. Plus. A bandwidth issue, we don't know. And I guess we don't care. The audio came out great and the conversation was really good. So I'll let you see all of us when the recording looks good and when it doesn't, I'm gonna show you pictures. Pictures of who's speaking, uh, the links to the websites of the products we're talking about. And I guess we just have to laugh and say, you know, sometimes you get lemonade and sometimes you get fruit you can't even recognize and you make something with it anyway. In any case, I hope you enjoy this recording of the hybrid Shiro's discussing their favorite products for making hybrid e-products. And here we go. And hello to our audience and to all six, seven including me, of our delightful panelists on this hybrid hangout for Shiro's only. We're talking tonight about our tools for creating hybrid e-products. And I'm going to throw out there that I use ScreenFlow just about every day now that I'm doing more and more video. Well, I'll pipe in first. Um, I actually use Lightroom a lot to edit my clips down, but the finished products I create in Photoshop CS6, believe it or not. Cool. I'm similar. I um, edit my, I trim my clips in Lightroom, and I match up the the color of my photos and stuff with those clips, and I put them together in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, if I want to change the clip speed, I like to change the clip speed of some of my videos, but I've just bought a book about editing in video and Photoshop CS6, so I'm looking forward to trying that out as well because I want to play with the, uh, you know, all the different creative things you can do in Photoshop layers and stuff. Well, I've been playing very on very, very simple terms. I do my photo editing and my video clipping, if you wish, in Lightroom. And then I was putting them into Photo Magico because I'm a Mac user. And that is a slideshow creation program from these German guys named Boinks. And I think it's really a lot of fun to, to be able to edit that way. Um, photo editing or video editing and putting all my pictures and video together into a product. I also have done a, a couple of tutorials on, on some of the products I use because it, it's also a screen share program where you can record your, your screen as well as the, the audio. So it, it's, I've, I've used it quite a bit for my products. I'm Jessica. I've been using um, Lightroom to edit, edit things down and then I use ProShow Producer to do final products. I, and I start with Persia Web sometimes. Uh, I've been using Pinnacle Studios version 16, and I do it for uh, the video clips trimming and also for putting the entire show together. So it, it's a nice tool. I do it for audio trimming also. Fantastic. And at this point, it'd be nice if our audience kind of got to know who we are. Jess is the only one who bothered to tell us, um, and that's okay. I'm Carol. I'm in Wisconsin, and I shoot sports and portraits. And in addition to ScreenFlow and listening to what all the other ladies use, I use um, ProShow Web a lot um, to create something that's got a whole lot more pizzazz than I can possibly do on my own in either Premiere Pro, which I'm just learning, or in ScreenFlow. So um, could someone go next and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about the tools? I'm going to go again. I'm Jessica. And so I use, like I said, Lightroom and, and Persia Web primarily. I've also used Movie Maker to trim. Um, but I think as we're saying this, let's say what we edit on a Mac or PC on PC, so ScreenFlow doesn't work for me. Today, I really want to know what you use. Well, I do. I use uh, Pinnacle uh, for most everything now. Is that and, PC uh, or Mac? It's a PC, and I'm totally PC user. I have a Mac for Christmas, but I haven't fired it up yet, so <laughs> it's a brand you. new experience for me. <laughs> so, but That's I am what? a PC. 
<laughs> yeah, I am a PC user, and uh, like I said, I've been using Pinnacle Studios because it, it gives me lots of flexibility, and I can trim also in there either video or audio. So that's that's what I've been using. Is that pricey? Is that a pricey program, Cindy? Uh, no, I think it's in the hundred dollar range. Oh, not bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it has four video tracks to it and two audio tracks to it, but and I don't know if they have a Mac version for it or not, but I have used it probably for 10 years on the very earlier versions that right. they had, which are a lot easier to get around in than the newer ones. There's a little bit of a learning curve there, picking that back up again. And you do screen captures with that as well? No, I don't believe it does screen captures. Okay. You, have to, you have to use something else for that and drop them in. Okay. I actually use um, just about everything on the market. I'm uh, for my screen captures. I do a lot of educational videos, and and when I'm doing quick and dirty stuff for YouTube, I actually use Camtasia for Mac, and I just drop my MOV clips in there. It doesn't do the compressed video clips, but for the MOV clips, which are huge on the card. I mean, I fill up cards like just about every half an hour, but uh, I find the workflow is just faster. I don't want to convert files. I want to drop them in, squish them, you know, trim off the ends, and you know, I can edit the audio really easily in Camtasia. I can add graphics. I can put, you know, annotations and all sorts of like speech bubbles and everything. So, so I like to use that for my educational ones and to keep people engaged. And for my corporate stuff, my serious, you know, client work, I'll go to something a little more sophisticated like Final Cut Pro, and which actually also has some presets, which are kind of fun to work with as well. And your name is. Oh, and my name is Marlene, and I'm from Calgary, Canada. Well, I'm Suzette Allen, and uh, from Sacramento, California. And I use Camtasia too. I uh, use that to do my educational videos. And uh, and by the way, Cindy, don't feel bad about using a PC. I'm a PC girl too, and I do have a Mac. I have used it many times, though. It's not still in the box. <laughs> but I use it just to uh, teach do videos to show how things are done on a Mac, but I really do like my PC. Um, for something custom, I always use Photoshop because I can do anything. I have lots more control. It does take a little bit longer, uh, but it works to be able to do something really custom. But a lot of times, if I'm trying to do something with more images or just throw something together that has lots of pizzazz, I'll use ProShow Web. And if it needs more customization, I actually give it to my husband to do ProShow Producer, because I don't know how to do ProShow Producer yet. Um, so I just do it in Photoshop and um, what we've been doing is creating the custom products in Photoshop because I have a specific vision. Then I'll take my finished file and give it to my husband to remake in ProShow Producer mm. so that they can be an automated template and uh, then I can reuse it very quickly. I'm also using those to create video uh, templates for the lab Mouvoi. So we'll be able to have lots of people be able to use these and just basically drag and drop to make custom stuff. So we're in the process of getting that going. Cool. Cool. So that, I mean, Taya, the thing I think you'll love about Produce, Produ Pro Show Producer is you can take apart their, um, their themes and their templates and you can move things around and I think it'll take you a week at most to really sink your teeth into it. You know, it's not, for you, it will not be intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Actually, the templates they have are really good, and I would love to take them apart and see what I can do with them. I really should do that. I've just been so busy trying to learn Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, because I totally want to learn Photoshop from you. And I can tell you when I was using their Christmas themes, and I couldn't figure out how to get the, the same background on everyone. And once I figured it out, I could really just apply it to any slide I wanted. It was so cool. cool. I, just, I feel like I have so much control and producer. That's encouraging, and maybe I'll tackle that. Or keep letting John do it, but you know. <laughs> That's the thing to do, right? Keep there. Him Delegate. In trouble. <laughs> yes. I need a John. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just 
Does somebody want to introduce themselves and rescue us? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm Lynette, and I'm a total Mac person. I do have a PC that I bought when I was writing my first Photoshop book about eight years ago. It's holding down papers over there. I don't really know what to do. I tested it and realized there's no difference between Macs and, and PCs as far as Photoshop and Lightroom are concerned, so I don't need sure. to test on it. And so I really can't use ProShow Producer. I've used, I love ProShow Web. It's fabulous for a quick down and dirty, put it together, it let somebody else do all the work type of thing for me. And what I really love about ProShow Web is the ability that I have, I can download it, put it up, the full version on my computer in several different formats. Mm -hmm. The other thing I really like is that if I want to send it off to a client, they can, I can let them see the full version, just a, a, a a lightweight version that that uh, would go just on an iPad, iPhone, or something like that, or I can let them download the whole large version for a um, to show on a larger screen, and I think that that program is really amazing, and that's just the online one that they have right there. I like the iPad version of that. I find like you know, I lay in bed at night. You know, I can't put the screen down. You know, I mean, I might as well be on it 21 hours a day. But I, I'm, you know, if I if I'm trying to like I have photos on my iPad. Oh, let's see how this works. And I like playing with their iPad app. I find that's where I've made my that. most. I've had the most fun with that because for me, the iPad is like the toy, the toy computer. So uh, then I play with photos which I normally wouldn't play with. You know, I just you know have a little more fun with it, looser. You know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So they do have an iPad app. Yes. Pro Show Web. Yep. Very cool. Okay, that. And I'm a food blogger, and, and my blog's name is called Gapy's Grub. And I'm in the Seattle, Washington area. And in addition, I mentioned before that I use ScreenFlow a lot, but I also use Pro Show Web like most of most everyone else here. Um, I don't have the Pro Show producer yet, but I'm I'm thinking I may get into that just to have more control over the, the editing of the templates and, and you know, using the templates. But, but yeah, ProShow Web has, has a great selection of templates that I, that I really like if I'm wanting to do something, put together something really quick. There's a lot of neat transitions, and, and you, do, you can do some editing within ProShow Web. You can change some of the transitions. You can, it has a really good music library that I, that I think is, is great. So that that's that's really neat too. And then um, the only thing is the audio. You can't really edit much in ProShow Web with the audio. So I like to export the videos and then and then edit the audio in ScreenFlow. So that's kind of my my process. And then for processing the photos, I use Lightroom and Photoshop. Excellent! Wow, how similar and how diverse. I mean, I don't have a PC at all. I you I had one for about six months that a friend of mine gave to me but uh, but no I there's none in the house there are none in the house there's about six or eight Macs of various ages but wow. four are in use four Macs are in use with me and the other people in the house and uh, a couple of iPads but no PCs here aha uh -huh. it's okay thank we'll you. forgive you thank <laughs> you <Mac power. laughs> No, I'm totally Mac. Um, my husband's totally PC, so we've got some of everything in the house. And of course, neither of us can do it just one. We have to each have multiples of everything. Absolutely. But of course. <laughs> so let's let's um, answer one more question before we uh, conclude this, because we've really provided a lot of cool information. Um, but there is a reason that Mouvoir.com is becoming um, a template-driven hybrid e-product lab a place where you can take a, a template and have a recipe so you know that it takes two stills, two videos, um, and a partridge in a pear tree or whatever to fulfill that template. So you shoot for that, you combine it together with some, um, some information, you send it up to the lab, lab processes it, gets it back to you. That's very cool, that's very efficient. So of all the things that you do to make a hybrid e-product, what is the one thing that um, uses up most of your time? The one thing you wish could go a lot faster? And for me, it's, it's the actual editing of the video clip because I'm not very good at that yet. And, and the piecing together of things when I decide to do it by hand, it takes me forever. What about the rest of you? I think for me, it's deciding on a theme, you know, uh, what do I want the finished product to look like? So if I have some preset templates that I can use 
and I can go through them and go, oh, I like that one. That fits what I'm shooting. That's the that's going to be a time saving for me rather than sit there and play and and like Suzette, I'll go into Photoshop and create from scratch, but that's very time consuming. So and not a lot of people can do that. So to me, having some templates that I can just go, oh, this one fits my design, and use it. That's a huge time saving for me. I think for me, that's great ideas, Lynette. I think for me, it's also shooting smarter, like not shooting so much, and especially with a high with a high volume situation. If I'm shooting team sports or things like that, I would shoot smarter and tighter, and you know, just do as much uh, of the photo editing in camera, like you know heaven forbid, shoot raw files, um, and just get it all ready to go so that the assembly, you kind of already have it in your mind. You sort of pre-visualize, okay, I want this piece, this piece, and this this kind of piece, this kind of piece, and a couple of these kind of shots. Have the audio pre-figured out, and then boom, slam it all together. I mean, we but have to, to do, work for speed. To do that, you need the templates, and you need to yes. see what, what templates are available to you, and I think that's the real key to working faster. I think for me, um, I'm doing these pro and motion videos which are about me pay to be on the about me page of a website or something and I I'm not really looking for information. People will give information but really looking for them to show something about the person, right? And so it's about making that interview more provocative. So that I don't have to listen to a half hour and then come up with a hundred clips and then bring it down to four. You know, it's like how do I do a five minute interview to pull out somebody's shocking self, right? And then be able to come up with those four clips repeatedly. So it's not, I, the ten points will be helpful, don't get me wrong. But it's something about my process and, and again, knowing what I'm going after before I get there. Yeah, I agree that uh, editing the video clips is probably the most uh, time consuming. And I found that if, if I'm doing a repeat of things, let's say you have a customer say a certain line, and then, okay, that was really good, but let's do it again. Okay, that was really good. Do it one more time, and this time happier or whatever. If I make each one of those a separate clip, it makes it easier for me. So I'm not watching one, like, how many times through and which one was that. So that helps me a lot. And then I also use Lightroom because with Lightroom, I can just run my mouse over the, the thumbnail, and it'll give me, a, like, a teeny mini view of what's going on so I can isolate them. And then when I'm going through, the ones that I, I think are useful, I'll flag them red. And the ones that are maybe, I'll do them yellow. Then once I get it and I trim it down to where I want, I'll flag it green. So in the end, I can just pick all the green ones and export. So um, that's kind of a process I have worked out from just just going through the bog of all of the video <laughs> clips. But it works. Yeah, I kind of do something similar, but I, I've never used the color ratings in Lightroom. I always use the stars. So I'll, I'll make you know five stars the the ones that I that I think I'll probably use, and I might use four stars for the maybes. So I, I do kind of a similar process as you. High cool. grading. We have to high grade whatever <laughs> works. <laughs> for me, I I think templates are going to be what I use the most because Pro Show Producer even there's a lot of great templates out there and, and that really speeds up the workflow for me when I can see something that I like and I know that it's gonna it's gonna work every time and that client is gonna just love it. And then also the other thing that, that eats up a lot of my time is distribution. You know, what 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 version are we gonna have this in? What version fits what device and what do they have and getting all that uh, we do a lot of converting for websites back and forth to different versions to make sure things work on all browsers and that kind of thing. So that, that's going to be a big problem, and I'm hoping that, that Mavor uh, fixes a lot of that. 
That part of the process is getting better though. Like I've been making videos for web for like three years now and it used to just kill me and now it seems so easy. You just push a button and it seems to spit out something decent. I, I mean I used to struggle with file sizes and dimensions of yeah. my video and like what didn't play on the iPad and oh my gosh. Now it's, it actually is, believe it or not for anyone who's new out there, it actually is a lot yeah. easier than it was even two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, when I started started doing editing, I with video, I was using iMovie, and I since I got involved, got ScreenFlow and ProshaWeb, I have not even touched iMovie. It's just yeah. I don't use it at all anymore. So, are we saying that you could invest a hundred to two hundred dollars into a program and have a great self-contained program? What are we saying about the cost of this? Well, if you use Lightroom already, I mean, I think a lot of people use Lightroom, and that's a really good way to organize and and trim your clips. In terms of assembly, you can get a lot for a hundred bucks because Camtasia for Mac is a hundred bucks, ScreenFlow is a hundred bucks, or isn't it something like that? Yeah, yeah. it's and, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, Pro Pro Show Web is Pro Show Producer is about two hundred yeah. two fifty. But you know, for a professional tool, that's really not that much. Like, I don't think it's that much. And no, to me, it's a, you know, it's it's worth it if it saves you time and gives you good quality output. Like, it's the output, final product. If it gives you the formats you need and the file formats that work with all the devices that your clients are using, then, you know, it's gonna. Who cares? It's like two hundred bucks is nothing, really. Right, right, right. And my other question before we go is. How hard is it to do it in um, Photoshop? That's a loaded question. Yeah, I was going to say all eyes wow. on Suzanne. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. first, the well, first well, one I did was extremely painful. Oh my gosh. Uh, but I'd never done anything like that at all. And once I did one, it was actually pretty simple. And there's a lot of little automated things in there, like the transitions and the fades. Of course, I didn't know where that little button was the first time around. <laughs> That's why we're relying on you to do the tour. There you go. Right there. Yes. <laughs> so I can throw together something pretty fast now. But yeah, the first one is always the most painful. But there's actually quite a bit of power. And once you wrap your head around the process of the layers spread over time, then um, it's, it's actually really fun. And it's why do you then redo them in Pro Show? Well, why? Because the Pro Show producer model is what uh, is the template. That's the only way you can do drag and drop as far as a template. Oh, now, the right. reason I don't make it in that is because I don't know how to use Pro Show producer, but I know Photoshop like the back of my right. hand. And since it's capable of it, I mean, I might as well figure it out and uh, master that. So that's what I've been oh. trying to do. Um, I would say Photoshop is probably not the ultimate tool for editing video. Like, if you have a Swiss Army knife, it's got a screwdriver in it, right? It's great. It's got all those little tools on it. But if I'm going to do something serious, I'm going to get a power drill. But if I'm just <laughs> doing a few little things, the Swiss Army knife is fine. So Photoshop is great for editing video, a bunch of little things like that. But if I'm going to be doing hardcore video editing, lots and lots of stuff, I would probably use Premiere. But for the hybrid stuff that I'm doing, um, Photoshop works great for that. And also you can add really neat effects in Photoshop and if you know how to use Photoshop you can put those in and then put them into a templated system so that clip is exactly how you want it and you put it into the template. Is that how I understand it? Right. right. I can get it exactly the way I want in Photoshop um, where I can't really express that to my husband to make it for me. You know that lack of communication on the creative level. So I can make what I want in Photoshop and then he can recreate it in that template version. Yeah. I guess my question and maybe for other photographers who are on a budget, is it worth upgrading to CS6 for the video? Or Absolutely. is it better to invest in Pro Show or I don't know. It's, I, well, you know, Photoshop we, gives we, you a lot more than just Pro Show would. Photoshop is so much more photo editing and uh, and you can do your text slides and things like that that it gives you a lot more 
for your, yes, it's more expensive, but if you have Photoshop, you should upgrade because you have so many more capabilities than just what ProShow can do. So it's like a much larger choice of, of tools. I have another question, though. There is from Adobe, you've mentioned Premiere Pro. They also make a program which I'm not familiar with is Premiere Elements. Now, I know Photoshop Elements, and I do teach that as well as Photoshop for a different level. How has anybody played with Premiere Elements? Because mm -hmm. Photoshop compared to, Photoshop Elements compared to Photoshop is exceptionally easy to learn. It's also really easy on the pocketbook compared to photo, full version of Photoshop. Premiere Elements, my guess, is that it's similar to Premiere Pro in that it's far less expensive and probably has the same capabilities on a much simpler level, not with the high-end tools, but with the basics and would that be enough? I've heard that it is because I watched a thing on Creative Live a couple weeks ago and uh, the get one of the gals who was on there did everything in elements just to, in, in uh, Premiere Elements just to yeah. prove the point that you can I do this so. from, for an under hundred dollar program. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My husband uh, started out with Premiere Elements and used it for quite a while. Now he's using Premiere Pro, but uh, he said that that would be the next place for me to move to is Premiere Elements, and it's pretty powerful. Yeah. I haven't done that yet, but will be. I actually have it because I also teach uh, Photoshop Elements, and I bought it with a bundle with Premiere Elements. I just never cracked it open because then I got Creative Cloud, and that has the full version of Premiere, so... I'm thinking, well, I should go back to that Elements version. Well, I think that's a pretty good idea because it, when I would, I'd have, obviously I've been teaching and writing books on Photoshop, <laughs> the big one, and I can go, I went and somebody asked me about Elements, so I got Elements, and it took me two minutes to figure it out, coming from Photoshop, and there, was, there are things in Elements that are far easier to do than actually doing those same things in Photoshop. For example, extracting someone or combining two photos and getting the faces on uh, mom and dad uh, and from one image to combining them to the other image where the kids look better. It's a million times easier in Elements than it is in Photoshop. Photoshop elements. So I'm guessing that maybe Premiere Elements is like that. It's got a, a simple and a guided and an expert version as well. And another thing about Photoshop Elements is it has a lot of preset backgrounds and stuff right. which Photoshop doesn't have and I expect that El uh, Elements, Premiere My Elements template. would also have a lot of those things where you could just... Like templates. Yeah, the templates, yeah. exactly. So I'm going to go check it out this week. I have it on Good my... Idea. Terrific. Well, awesome. Ladies, this was extremely illuminating, even though I kept coming and going. We're having a bad connectivity night, I guess. Um, to our audience, we invite you to uh, keep watching Discover Mirrorless somewhere, one side or the other. There's a place for you to subscribe so that you get our newsletter and you know what's going on all the time, which would be very cool. We encourage you to do that. And until next time, Shoot lots, remember the video, and keep dreaming. Learning hybrid photography one day at a time. Become a smarter photographer every day at discovermirrorless.com. It's free and phone and tablet friendly.